The upcoming Japanese general election will take place on October 31st, 2021, and will determine the new composition of the House of Representatives. This will be the first election of the Reiwa era, and will see the newly minted Prime Minister Kishida Fumio face off against his counterparts in Japan's opposition parties. Before we go into more details on the parties and their candidates, however, it's worth taking a step back to explain the basic structure of the Japanese government to those who are unfamiliar with Japanese politics. Feel free to skip ahead in this video if you so desire. The Japanese government is a parliamentary system broadly similar to that of the United Kingdom. Japan's legislature, known as the National Diet, is composed of two bodies, the lower house, known as the House of Representatives, and the upper house, known as the House of Councillors. The House of Representatives, currently made up of 465 members, is the more powerful and important of the two bodies. General elections take place at a maximum of every four years, as mandated by the Constitution, but they can be called for earlier, and in practice usually are. The representative's power comes from their ability to override vetoes from the House of Councillors with a two-thirds supermajority, or a simple majority on matters of the budget, treaties, and government formation, that is to say, the appointment of the Prime Minister. Now, the House of Councillors consists of 245 members elected to serve fixed six-year terms. It can delay or outright block some legislation from the House of Representatives, provided that there's no supermajority in the lower house, but is overall the less powerful of the two bodies. Councilor elections take place on a staggered three-year cycle, with the next election scheduled for July 2022. What we refer to as a general election is a nationwide election for all 465 members of the House of Representatives. The leading party or coalition in the representatives selects the prime minister, who in practice is pretty much always the leader of said party. To make things more interesting, though, not all members of the House of Representatives are elected in the same way, thanks to electoral reform legislation passed in 1994. The 1994 electoral reforms divided the source of members of the House of Representatives in two. 289 members are elected from 289 single-member districts in the first-past-the-post system. That is to say, the candidate with the most votes in each district wins said district. As an example, Yoshikawa Takamori of the LDP won Hokkaido's second district in 2017 with 41% of the vote, even though the majority of the constituents did not actually vote for him. The remaining 176 members are drawn from 11 multi-member geographic blocks, each of which is allotted a set amount of seats based on population. Voters in each block vote for a party list, and the share of the vote each party receives determines the amount of seats they win. In 2017, the LDP won 28.8% of the vote in the Hokkaido block, thus winning three out of the eight seats. The CDP also won three seats with 26.4% of the vote, while Kibonoto and Komeito won a single seat each. It's worth noting that due to both the way the districts are mapped and the seats are allocated in the blocks, the system is heavily gerrymandered in favor of rural voters, a dynamic not unlike that of the United States Congress or Electoral College. A voter from some of Japan's rural districts might be mathematically twice as valuable as one from, say, Tokyo. With all that structural background information out of the way, it's worth providing some context for the upcoming election by talking about the recent handful of prime ministers and the events of their tenures. Now, if you've only heard of one Japanese prime minister, it's probably Abe Shinzo, a member of the Liberal Democratic Party, the party that's dominated Japanese politics since 1955, Abe was elected prime minister in 2012 and remained in the office until his resignation for health reasons in fall of 2020, making him the longest-serving prime minister in Japanese history. 
In spite of his resignation, Abe remains in the Diet, and his ideas remain the LDP orthodoxy. One can even argue that this upcoming election is in many ways a referendum on Abe's legacy, even though he's no longer in the limelight. Abe was succeeded as Prime Minister by his longtime Chief Cabinet Secretary Suga Yoshihide, who defeated Kishida Fumio and Ishiba Shigeru in the LDP leadership election. Suga would not prove to be as canny of a leader as Abe, however, and his poor handling of the COVID-19 crisis, namely the unacceptably slow vaccination program, as well as the Tokyo Olympics, severely damaged public support for his government. Rather than lead his party into the 2021 election, an election necessitated by the four-year maximum term limit for the House of Representatives, Asuga chose to step down in October, sparking another LDP leadership election to replace him. The man who won that election would turn out to be former Minister of Foreign Affairs Kishida Fumio, who defeated Kono Taro, Takeichi Sanai, and Noda Seiko in the process. Kono Taro was actually more popular with the rank-and-file members of the LDP, but Kishida's greater support amongst the Dai members gave him the victory. Kishida succeeded Suga as Prime Minister on October 4th, and will lead the LDP going into the general election. On paper at least, the LDP is in a strong position going into said election. They hold 276 in the House of Representatives, well in excess of the 233 needed for a majority. The government is nonetheless a coalition government, with the LDP being joined by the smaller Komeito party, an arrangement that's existed almost continuously since the late 90s. Komeito's 29 seats bring them just short of having the two-thirds supermajority that they desire. The LDP by itself has over twice as many seats as its nearest opposition, the Constitutional Democratic Party, or CDP. As we're on the topic of parties, now is a good time to introduce their leaders, ideologies, and strategies. Nine parties will be contesting for seats in the House of Representatives, alongside various independent candidates. Two of them, the Liberal Democrats and Komeito, make up the current government. Five parties, the CDP, Communists, Democrats, Social Democrats, and Ray Washington Gumi, have agreed to form an electoral pact to reduce competition amongst themselves. The pact involves these parties endorsing common candidates in select districts and withdrawing from districts where they have little chance of winning, but where their endorsement could help another opposition candidate. Two parties, Nippon Ishin and the NHK party, are operating on their own. In addition, various independents will be contesting seats throughout the country. The Liberal Democratic Party, or LDP for short, currently holds 276 seats in the House of Representatives. The LDP was founded in 1955 via a merger of the Liberal Party and Democratic Party, and they benefit from the greater weight given to rural voters in the electoral system. Now, they're an ideologically center-right party with conservative views on social issues and a pro-business stance on the economy. They're notably hawkish on foreign relations, and they're in favor of revising Article 9 of the Constitution. In general, they rely heavily on the image of competency and stability. Now, the LDP has controlled the government almost continuously since 1955, save for two gaps uh, from 1993 to 96 and 2009 to 2012. And as mentioned, they're currently in the governing alliance with Komeito. The LDP's president, and thus their candidate for prime minister, is Kishida Fumio. He's incumbent, though only by a few days, and a representative from Hiroshima's first district. Now, Kishida actually started off towards the left of the party, though he's moved rightwards on foreign policy and social issues. Economically, though, he's still towards the left of the LDP. He's known for advocating for more welfare and social programs, and has an image that's similar to that of compassionate conservatism. He's also uh, promoted himself as somebody who'll bring change and a new face to the LDP, 
But that image is really hurt by the fact that he has a very old cabinet and just the general view is that he's a kind of a mouthpiece for the party elites. His goal will be to maintain the LDP's majority and cement himself as a long-term prime minister, thus avoiding the fate of his predecessor. The main opposition party is the Constitutional Democratic Party, or CDP for short. They currently hold 109 seats, and they're a descendant of the Democratic Party of Japan, which controlled the government from 2009 to 2012. The CDP itself was founded in 2017 by members of the Democratic Party, who remained after most of their colleagues split to join Tokyo Governor Koike Yuriko's Kibono To. They managed to establish themselves as the largest opposition party in the 2017 general election, and this was further reinforced when the majority of the DPFP, which itself was a descendant of Kibonoto, merged back with the CDP in 2020. They're an ideologically center-left party with progressive views on social issues and a big focus on bringing out greater economic equality. They're also known for dovish views on their foreign relations and are opposed to Article 9 revision. And they're currently basically the head of the anti-LDP electoral pact. Their candidate for prime minister is Edano Yukio, the representative of Saitama's 5th district. Yukio was first elected to the Diet in 1993 as a part of Hosokawa Morihiro's new party, and he would later join the DPJ and serve in various positions under their prime ministers Khan and Noda. Edano has held consistent center-left slash progressive views throughout his career, and is relatively charismatic by Japanese political standards. However, his current electoral pact with the communists has opened him and the CDP up as a whole to attacks from the right. His goal will be to increase the amount of seats held by the CDP and establish it as a strong opposition party to the LDP. Komeito, currently holding 29 seats, is a member of the governing coalition alongside the LDP. Komeito was founded in 1964 by members of the Soka Gakkai religious movement, itself an offshoot of Nichiren Buddhism. Their policies are based on the values of Soka Gakkai, which leads to a mixture of right and left leaning positions. While they're socially conservative, they do place a big emphasis on social welfare, such as on free education through high school, something which currently doesn't exist in Japan, and a higher minimum wage. They hold pacifist views on foreign policy and are staunchly opposed to nuclear weapons. They first joined the LDP in a governing coalition in 1999, and have since been in coalition with them to the present day, save for the period where the LDP was out of the government. Their leader is Yamaguchi Natsuo, a member of the House of Councilors from Tokyo. He was first elected to the Diet in 1990, and has been the leader of Komeito since 2009. Now, the coalition with the LDP under Yamaguchi and his predecessors can alternatively be seen as Komeito compromising on their values, or as them doing the most possible as a small party to influence the government. As an example, the 100,000 yen cash handout for all citizens in response to the coronavirus was something that Komeito pushed the LDP into giving. Uh, His goal will be to maintain or increase Komeito's position in the House in order to keep them relevant to the LDP. The Japan Communist Party, or JCP for short, has currently 12 seats in the House of Representatives, and is led by Shi Kazuo. The JCP was founded in 1922, which actually makes it the oldest active political party in Japan. Now, they fully renounced the violent revolution in the 1950s, and hold a mixture of left-wing to far-left positions. They support the complete disarmament and dissolution of the Japan Self-Defense Forces, for example, and are highly opposed to the U.S.-Japan alliance. They're also in favor of greater social welfare and economic controls. Their positions in things such as education and anti-corruption makes them popular in the cities. They're a member of the anti-LDP electoral pact alongside the CDP and various smaller parties. One of the parties that's not a part of the pact is Nippon Ishin no Kai, uh, the Japan Innovation Party. 
Currently led by Matsue Ichiro and Katayama Toranosuke, they hold 11 seats in the House of Representatives and were founded in 2015 by Osaka-based politicians. They're strongest in the Osaka region, though they now contest seats across the country. They hold center-right to libertarian positions with neoliberal economic views and are in favor of federalism and political decentralization, a rarity in Japan, which is a highly centralized um, government. They're in favor of Article 9 revision and have all-round populist demeanor. While they're publicly opposed to the LDP and Komeito, they're politically the closest to them of any opposition party. The Democratic Party for the People, the DPFP, currently led by Tamaki Yuichiro, has eight seats in the House of Representatives. They were founded in 2018 as a formal merger between Kibo Noto and members of the Democratic Party who defected to join them. Now, the bulk of the DPFP merged back with the CDP in 2020, but a few members remained, keeping the party alive. They're the ones who hold centrist to right-leaning positions with relatively neoliberal economic views and a focus on structural reforms to Japan's political system. They have joined with the CDP and various other parties in the Electoral Pact. Rounding out the list of parties, we have the Social Democratic Party, Reiwa Shinsengumi, and the NHK Party. The Social Democrats have a single seat in the House of Representatives and are the last remnants of the old Socialist Party. They are a member of the Opposition Electoral Pact. Um, Reiwa Shinsengumi are similarly a member of the Opposition Electoral Pact and are a left-wing, progressive, populist party. Finally, the NHK party, who is not a member of the pact, is basically a single-issue party that seeks to abolish the NHK license fee. They, too, have one seat in the House of Representatives. While the ultimate goal of any party going into an election is simply to win as many seats as possible, preferably a majority, the reality of politics means that each party and its leader will have more specific aims. For the LDP and Komeito, the push for a two-thirds supermajority needed for constitutional revision seems unlikely. The LDP will instead aim to maintain their majority in the House of Representatives. A decent to good performance will help establish Prime Minister Kishida's authority, while a poor one could threaten to turn him into another one-year Prime Minister. For the CDP and those joining them in the opposition electoral pact, gaining a majority or even winning enough seats to deny the LDP Komeito alliance its majority is incredibly unlikely. The CDP will aim to increase its share of the votes in the lower house, as doing so would help to establish it as a de facto alternative choice to the LDP and set the stage for gains in subsequent elections. The opposition as a whole will seek to prove the viability of cooperation in the form of electoral pacts. The general consensus based on polling is that the LDP looks set to lose a number of seats but remain above the 233 needed for a majority. Anything lower would be a disaster, even though they'd likely still be able to form a government with the assistance of Komeito. The CDP will likely gain seats thanks to the LDP's troubles in the coronavirus and post abe era, but its gains may be limited by those of other parties. Now, polls vary as to how many seats the LDP is likely to lose, with numbers between 10 and 30 all seeming plausible. Newspapers such as Yomiuri and Nikkei predict heavy LDP losses, while Mainichi and Asahi show favorable numbers for the LDP and a lack of momentum on the part of the CDP. Luckily, it won't be too long until we know the results of the general election. Voting will take place in a few days' time on the 31st of October. Thank you for watching this video. While I put this one together fairly quickly, I'm currently in the planning stage for a series of videos dealing with Japanese politics. If you enjoyed this, make sure to keep an eye out for my future content.